Hello. You are listening to the Shaun of the Dead commentary. I'm Edgar Wright, the director and co-writer of the film. I'm Simon Pegg. I am the co-writer of the film. I'm in it. I play Shaun. This is one of the commentaries. One of the many commentaries. Of which We're I'll be aiming to. to do more commentaries than Lord of the Rings. Edgar, what's that music? <laughs> well, first trivia point, this music is from the original Dawn of the Dead. Yes, that's right, Dawn of the Dead. Um, Dawn of the Dead? Yeah, did you not know about it? Never heard of it. The George Mera original. This is a bit of library music that was found for us by a guy called Joel Martin, who spent, as an obsessive Dawn of the Dead fan, spent about three years in the Dwarf Library. Uh, in a Dwarf Library? Of, in a Dwarf Library. But uh, he's got an album out of library music from oh, Dawn of the Dead. Dwarf. I think it's a, a Dwarf Library. My face! Simon's face there. Specials in the background. That's not, that's Steve and uh, Phyllis. Yeah, they're special, they're special oh, artists. the music, sorry. Yeah, a bit of both. Um, this was shot at Ealing Film Studios. All the Winchester interiors were done at the famous Ealing Film Studios, home of Kind Hearts and Coronets, Lady Killers, Porridge. The Man in the White Suit. Doctor Who. All those things. Who'd have thought, when we were doing the commentary on the first series of Space in this very studio, that four years later we'd be commenting, commentating on our very own zombie film. Edgar, your thoughts on that matter? Um, I'm very proud that we managed to do a zombie film and uh, it was a, like a boyhood dream come true. certainly was. And uh, we're very pleased that we got to spend millions of pounds of somebody else's money to create what's essentially... It was actually my money. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Self-funded. You're part of working title now. Yes. Um, um, I love the way this... There's Harry Potter and Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, the cappuccino years. Uh, I like the way this scene opens out, actually. To, it starts off on Sean and then encompasses Liz, then Ed, then David and Di, and then at the end it closes back down again, back to Sean. That, that was that. You'd always wanted to do that, didn't you? Well, the idea with this is that we, in the kind of the realm of the comedy horror, we wanted it to be very much that it started very normal to the point of having a, a prologue scene which has absolutely no horror references in it whatsoever. Rather than kind of... Um... Apart from Lucy's fake town. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, this was a very difficult scene to write, actually. It was kind of one that we poured over for ages, and um, it was very difficult, but, you know, we wanted to kind of... We wanted to basically set up all the characters in the first... Kind it was of a lot longer, film. wasn't it? I mean, we, we, it was we, a lot longer, yeah. It was a lot longer, but uh, I think, actually, in the edit, it came down just because we realised that um, we wanted to crack on a little quicker, perhaps... We wanted to reach a zombie killing at minute 25 rather than minute, <coughs> minute 45. Um, but it's, it's very difficult um, to, you know, in a film like this to juggle everything and try and get all the kind of the characters sketched out. And <laughs> I love when Nick actually came up with that singing himself. In fact, I think he came up with the phrase, she's like butter as well. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I think it might have... Butter has two different... If you look on www.urbandictionary.com, yeah. you can look at the several different... Meanings of the word butter because it can mean ugly or beautiful. You fucking geek. It's true. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great website. That I know because me and Nick used to say, "Oh, <laughs> better not say what." No, no. If you'd say, "Oh no," it makes me sound juvenile. Here's some music. This was done actually after the shoot. We um, this was we were all supposed to do this kind of almost like choreographed sequence done by... There's Nicola, who's Mary, later on in the film. Yeah, and at the back there, Naira and Karen. And also the, the back of my, the film. My, my own... There's also, there's the man Maureen. who runs past the florist. There's the um, Simba, one Simba. of the, uh, the pyjama zombie. Those are the clubbers that bite That's, Bill um, Nye's neck later Kier on. Kia and Matt, who at the front, who bite Bill. Um, That's Bagley's as well, where we shot the clubbing scene from space. Virtually everybody you see in this opening sequence eventually becomes a zombie. There's also Tim who was, uh, is the zombie to get shot in the neck in the bus queue. And, um, also, said the, two, the two, the couple who were outside Liz's flat as yeah, well. The old couple, yeah. This is kind of a little nod to the opening credits of Day of the Dead, with some, a zombie shadow and zombie uh, feet lumbering into frame. So oh, that's, that's actually CGI legs on me there. <laughs> now, here, actually, if you look on this coffee table, there's a very un-PC ashtray, which, after this shot, I kind of thought... Do you know what? Maybe we should get rid of that black baby with a sombrero on it. So if you <laughs> notice that, that... Look, look at it. Um, that, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this scene, I decided to ditch it. What a so lovely a, piece of racist memorabilia. A very racist continuity error. I decided, rather than reshoot the scene, I thought maybe we'd get away with it. 
Do you think anyone has ever said, can we lose the black baby with the sombrero from the foreground? I think it's being CG'd out of the American release. Pete Serafinowicz. Uh, a little nod to American welfare. And the idea with these little um, crash zoom sequences was kind of like... It's kind of like a nod to people like James Cameron and Sam Raimi of that idea of doing really stylized tooling up sequences. Usually, especially in something like um, I don't know Terminator or, or uh, you know Army of Darkness, you see kind of people tooling up with weapons, and the idea was to do the same thing but with very mundane, literally like sort of toilet kind of like routines and making tea and stuff like that. So it's kind of all leading up to a gun sequence later. There was a massive crash room on a poo, wasn't there? But you took it out. <laughs> I think that's staying in for the German version. <clears throat> what are you saying? <laughs> Germans like toilet humor. Why do you think Leslie Nielsen's still a major star in Germany? Beats the hell out of me. There's Pete Serafinowicz, fantastic actor, who we... Uh, one of the... We actually wrote Pete for Pete, didn't we? In fact, we called him Pete after Pete. I know, very Pete. unimaginative character names. Pete. Um, this is a Time Splitters 2... Also, if you listen to this scene, not only can you hear Rafe Spall, who plays um, Noel in the shop on the other end of the phone, but listen to Nick scratching his pubes here, which he actually did. That's a real Foley sound of somebody scratching their pubis. True. Uh, Nick, in, on, on, well, no doubt on the, uh, on the, on the cast commentary, uh, if you flip over to that, we'll tell you about what he did to his pubes. I'll that, make, if I'll make him... That's for later. That's for later. <laughs> you, you won't notice this, but on the wall behind Pete is a poster for a... Something you did, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a thing I did at the National Film Theatre. Um, mm -hmm. It's a picture from an 80s Matchbox video I did. Come on, it was pretty... No, we would have preferred to have had that on one piece of paper we decided, didn't we? Yeah, that joke was originally a bit different, and I'm not entirely sure it works as well, but um, there was also in the original script... Didn't it kind of say, I'm um, gay? It was like a... <laughs> we wrote, I am prick. And then we were worried that it might look like a... That we'd made a typo. Oh, my God. Now, when we... The, the fart gag, we were... I'm, I'm, I'm reticent about fart. I like this one because... Um, because we wanted to try and put something as, as banal as a fart gag into a really emotional scene at the end, but... Uh, I, I quite like it. I, th I like the way it works. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I wary think about a... relying on toilet humour, unlike yeah. Leslie Nielsen and the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> hey! You can't knock early Leslie Nielsen, we have to point There's that Gavin. out. There's Gavin. He's going to be a football star when he gets old. He was great. We didn't point out that... He could do flick-ups on cue. Pete on his um, earlier... Uh, Horton? Pete on his earlier phone call <laughs> made a little spaced reference, said, Hi, Dom. That guy's the guy who's got... A lot, all of the people in this sequence basically crop up later. Like, all of the extras are either zombies or dead people. Like, you see... That's Collet there. You Collet. see him later. Horton, who was the homeless guy, uh, if you Chris check Dickens. out... If you check, that's the editor, Chris Dickens. If you check out the um, Something About Mary comic strip, uh, you'll see how Horton's character uh, becomes a zombie and he actually sires Mary, who turns up in the garden, which is a nice little back thing. There was Bub's Pizzas there as well. Now, in the background there is Tim Bagley, who is the one-armed zombie later on. And he is... Um, you'll see in a deleted scene that he's buying some aspirin later, but basically, he, Tim actually is an amputee stuntman. Yeah, and, and, a, he's, f and a, a keen fencer. A keen fencer, he's a master fencer, but actually, if you see in that last shot, he's actually wearing a fake arm. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, was, Tim was an incredible... Because uh, he, he basically lost his arm in a motorcycle accident, and... Uh, but was the first person to make jokes about it all the time. He basically walked around with his, the vestige of his arm dressed up as a bloody mess, and I was always amazed because the last time he saw that it was probably the worst day of his life. But he always used to make jokes, and we used to go, oh, yeah, it's funny, it's pretty funny, we can say funny things! Because oh. it was a relief. He's great, a master fencer, though. And a fine man. Now... An MX5 driver as well. <clears throat> Rafe Spall, son of Timothy, soon to be... A, a, a marvellous comic actor star. in his own right, a huge star. He was very funny. He had a problem with giggling, though. We both... I couldn't keep a straight face with Rafe because he used to have this little grin and it would set me off. This and was shot in, um, I think, Finchley Central in a... Um, My mum's in the background here somewhere. In the next scene she is, is yeah. She? Actually, that was me. You can hear me on the other end of that phone call. Continue. Obviously, like, Rafe talking to... Somebody he spoke to Nick earlier. Oh, no, telling somebody about the dog deal with Nick. I love... It, it's like the silver 3 POs, isn't it? All them in there. <laughs> <laughs> the other Sean's. Hey, hey, Granddad. Uh, 
There was always an early idea with the with the scriptures to kind of contrive to have Sean stay in his Dixon's uniform for the whole film. So he's kind of like a a Tandy John McClane. He's wearing this really kind of like <laughs> rubbish, <laughs> short sleeved <laughs> thing, which gets completely trashed. But I think so. One of the executive producers um, didn't really twig until very late on in the production that you were going to keep your costume off the whole thing. I know. And was quite surprised, saying, well, so he's going to wear that for the whole thing? Do you think that's entirely wise? Mm. Oh, you could hear Cheggers there. That was Keith Chegwin. We had a whole gizmo that made my shirt go red in shot. Do you remember? We, we didn't use the... Oh, there's... Uh, f- um, oh, is it... Finola. Finola, M- Naira's friend doing the baby thing. And here he is. There's quite a lot to cram in on this commentary. I think we're going to get tired by the end of it. All the little things going on. Exactly. Huh? Um... Bill Nye. Bill, what a fantastic entrance. Bill does that brilliant turn on one foot. I can't <laughs> say enough nice things about Bill Nye. He's a splendid human. I know. It he was... has the kind of charm and confidence that only comes from being supremely talented. And he is uh, he's a special guy. In fact, I'm going to say that about everybody in this song because we were very lucky with the casting. The only downside with Bill Nye is that he isn't in it more. And I think we realised that on the shoot that, like... Uh, we, uh, there should be more Bill Nye in this film. But then he, he leaves them wanting, doesn't he? There's my mum being shown round at the back there. Oh, I'm going to look at a washing machine. Now, that was done in one take. This year. It was a very difficult thing to time these army trucks going past because there was a, a really bad one-way system. <laughs> yeah, we only did one take of it, didn't I we? I know. <laughs> one of the few times we only did one take of something. <laughs> but um, when, Ray, when I saw, last saw Rafe at the premiere, he was, he's, all, he's all toned. He's and buffed up. He's all buffed up. <laughs> He's a funny boy. He's a very funny boy. He didn't like being a zombie, though, did he? He didn't like being a zombie. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll embarrass him. <laughs> uh, That's actually Sonel there, who's uh, handing me the phone. Who had a? You're seeing the deleted scenes. He had a, a, a little line. He was he was very good as well. They made a great pair, actually, uh, um, as uh, Rafe and Sonel as as my sort of um, uh, nemesis. We wanted to give um, continue the thing from uh, spaced of. Teenagers chewing as a vaguely sinister thing. I love this kind of sound of like it sounds like cows grazing. Also, young people being scary. That's Robert, who you saw earlier in the credits it's running past. The Crouch and Fruiter is there on Crouch and Broadway, uh, the top of Crouch Hill. Uh, this is actually my manor. This is an actress called Sharon Gavin who delivers this line very well. Super mum. I was going to say, one of the... As Patch and the Pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> this is a difficult thing to time as well. Just out of the shot were loads of people wanting to get past and getting very irate, including, I remember watching Bernard Butler from Suede sitting on a park bench just out of shot watching the whole scene being oh, really? filmed. Yeah. He wasn't sitting on a park bench, he was waiting for a bus, so oh, okay. I'm going to point out that he was... No, that was Patch Connolly there who was uh, eating the pigeon, and as, a, yeah, as Edgar said, Sarah, uh, Sharon Gavin of the Gavins, comedy duo. Very funny. Catch him if you can. I was going to say, like one of the one of the big influences on this film, other than Dawn of the Dead, is the seventies version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the yeah. Philip Kaufman one. I also think that looks like Nick. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it always puts me off. But it it um hey um yeah, just the idea of having lots of strange things happening in the background. As Tim and Daisy meeting again. <laughs> After moving out of uh, Meteor Street and changing their names. This is actually CGI'd kind of footage from space that we've uh, reconstituated and redubbed. Jessica Stevenson is, in fact, a fully CG character. Yeah. Better than Gollum. She actually has got the sort of the Jar Jar Binks kind of hair go- thing going there as well. Don't mention that, man. <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot longer, this scene, which you'll see in the deleted scenes. It's a very, very difficult scene to kind of get right. Um, yeah. Fulci's, Fulci's, named after Luke's show Fulci. Fulci, or Rich Fulci. Or Rich Fulci. From the Mighty Boosh. <laughs> a friend of ours from the Americas. Um, Doesn't look that tidy. Oh, I had a few beers when I finished. <laughs> um, I just like watching Frost work. You can see lots of Ninja Tune posters well, around this, the walls. And all this walk. stuff was done towards the end of the shoot. We moved into Sean and Ed's flat in about week seven, didn't we? Yeah. And um, so... This was coming to a point in time. I, I, there's a scene actually I pointed out later on when we just look so knackered. Um, but yeah, this was coming towards the end of the shoot. It's quite a nice homecoming in a way because after a lot of the other, well, all of it was very tough as a shoot. But because this set was kind of the most like the spaced set, it felt like a weird. Felt like going back into the womb right at the end of the shoot. It was the prime nap spot for lunchtime. It was. <laughs> you'd often come in and you'd find uh, you know a crew member asleep on the sofa. If uh, oh yeah, although me, me, Nick, Dylan. 
and oh. Lucy always and Morag, yeah. the set nurse, used to go and sleep on the crash mat in Studio One. There was also there was a set which we never got round to using. We had a oh, scene Pete's in bedroom. Pete's bedroom, which we actually had to cut out because we were running out of time, and yeah. that that was the prime spot to. I slept in there that day. I was oh, really lovely, knackered. lovely. Um, look, at, look at cheeky frost. My my brother designed that T-shirt. I got wood, which um, basically we went through an, a series of different Ed T-shirts. Fucked. I heart pussy was one of them, which was considered too rude. Yeah, we couldn't have that in the publicity shots. Bumping donuts was in the Dunkin' Donuts font. Was not only like a bit of rude arcane lesbian slang, but also in the. Incidentally, Donut just quickly, sorry to inter uh, in inter I interrupt you, you, Edgar. I hate you. The pizza guy that you see you. outside the window. <laughs> Shut it! <laughs> has just walked back of shot. There's a lot going on in the back. It's worth watching this film and not watching any of the main characters. Dylan and Luce. This was shot in a, a flat in. Highgate. Highgate, Highgate, yeah. Highgate, West Hill. Very nice block of flats. Love to live there. And um, we crashed one of the. Uh, was, didn't one of the sort of. Um, the cranes or something just bash into the house. We left it like stuck against the house. I think there was a toppling occurred. Um, this is a very nice flat. In KT fact, it kind of looked. This is a bit like the TARDIS. This place because it looks slightly bigger. It is. Well, no, it looks slightly bigger inside. than the actual exterior location. Yeah, TARDIS. Yeah. Um, I like that. I like the the the, the thing about uh, Twat and the failed actress thing. It's very funny. I love I love Dylan in this. I love his his little presence there. Just sort of. I know. Silently loving the fact that Sean's getting bollocked. It's a nice thing, actually, Dylan, sort of, like, just the casting was quite, um... It was a, it was a nice thing, because it was a different thing for Dylan to do, like, playing kind of, like, sort of... Uh, yeah, Dylan was a surprise, actually. I, we hadn't actually thought of him for the role in Naira brought him in, and he just, you know, he did a really lovely reading of it. But he's, his kind of look is... My landlord, actually, uh, recently complained to me, because I didn't realise... Because of the noise and the smell. Yeah, it's not just that, but also that my he looks exactly like my landlord, Gareth. And because Dylan is probably the most unlikable character in it. And my landlord even has a paranoid. rugby rugby shirt in the same colours and wears a leather jacket and is Irish and has glasses like that and looks very similar. And he thought I was somehow making a dig at him. You clearly were. Well, maybe subconsciously. <laughs> I apologise, Gareth. I must say, I you like, get a free copy of this DVD. I do like the fact that, that Sean calls... Um, David Four Eyes when he hasn't got his glasses on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a wonderful this scene we did over, <laughs> this this was the last thing on one night and the first thing in the morning, and um, we did uh, Kate's reverse in the evening and mine in the morning, and it's bloody seamless. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kate there, she's lovely, isn't she? <clears throat> isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Um, these are really difficult scenes to write, actually. It's weird, like, we spent many a time writing, like, really banging our heads against the table trying to write the relationship scenes and kind of... I think Kate had one, was, had one of the hardest parts to play, in a way, because she had to represent a certain kind of, you know, sensibleness, which isn't always in, that interesting to play, but I think she played it really well. She I know, had, She had to be the voice of reason without being a nag or being boring and, you know... I know, because she's essentially playing... The straight woman, in a way, so uh, it's a very tough part for her to play. A bit of rain here. This was done in uh, Highgate West Hill. Yes. Is it West Hill? No, on Highgate North Hill. North Hill. That was actually probably a year ago today, actually. I think we were out there. This is uh, this oh. was in uh, Millwall, New Cross. God, that was cold that night. And I was getting really angry because you made me do it a hundred times. I, <laughs> and we still didn't quite get it right. And I had to go into the pub, dry off. The best thing about those night shoots was having pints because the pub would. I know we had a pint at seven in the morning after we wrapped. Um, Back in Ealing. This um, now this is this is kind of Nick's party piece, the Clyde. He's done this for years. We we wrote this into the script. We did write this into the script. This is very much contrived to get Nick's Clyde impression in there, and in fact the the later line. I'm not a performing monkey came out of Nick, me at parties going, do you Clyde, do you Clyde, do you Clyde? And I'm not a performing monkey. Now this originally on the set, we had Sinead O'Connor's Nothing Compares to You playing, which, because it's a Prince song, was impossible to clear, but I actually think we ended up with a better song because Chicago gets a big laugh, it costs 20,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a soundtrack to a billion breakups, basically, so there you go. I like all these bits. Um, now here, this is an interesting thing. There's lots of things in the script where it, it repeats. Things repeat later on or kind of have significance where there's oh, yes. re repeated dialogue. But this bit here, 
We should do tomorrow. Shall I explain but, it tomorrow? No. Oh, that, that, on the other commentary about the, the 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 little princess and Bloody Mary and all that stuff. No, let's explain it now, quickly. Basically, Nick prefigures the entire film. He says that his plan. It prefigures later on. He says. Tomorrow morning, let's have a Bloody Mary, which they do with the checkout girl. He's called Mary. Bloody he Mary said, in the garden. Let's take a grab a bite of the king's head, which is Philip gets bitten round at Barbara's. Exactly. Then it's like grab a couple of the little princess. The couple being picking up David and die at Lizzie's. Exactly. Her being the little princess. Then staggering back to the Winchester, stagger like zombies, and we're back at the bar for shots. Ba bang. Ba bang. They've got a gun. If you didn't hate us before, you do now. That is incredibly geeky. Now this is the like mighty. <laughs> Patricia Franklin, veteran of RADA and the National Theatre and, most importantly, the Carry On carry films. On films. You can see Patricia in Carry On Camping, Carry On Girls, Carry On Behind and Carry On Loving and Carry On England. All the greats. <laughs> in Carry On Camping, she plays the pregnant farmer's daughter who gets into a mix-up with Terry Scott when he comes round and asks for some cream and says, I was here last year. Your, your daughter was very uh, welcoming. Oh, she was, was she? So I didn't do that as well as um, I could have. <laughs> I just let you get on with it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Nick would actually, I think it's on the outtakes, but he said something different every time he described Patricia just to make me laugh so that my laugh was genuine, and he said some terrible things. And Patricia's a lovely woman, and she could hear all of it. I know, she kind of, like, got a... You know, like a. Incidentally, the just the the dogs can't look up thing. Um, I'm sure Nick will explain it in the actors' commentary, uh, so I might leave it for that one. But uh, came from an incident on Spaced with uh, Ada, who played. Um... In fact, Ada was came on set that day, didn't she? She was going to be in yeah. a scene that we never got to shoot. We were going to do a, a cameo with Colin. Colin, the dog from Space, but it didn't That's work it. out. This was um... four in the morning. Yeah. And Litza Bixler, the... Uh, She's our choreographer in the background, snogging a, a dummy. Even away now. <laughs> now, weirdly enough, that telephone box was actually there. I know that looks like a really, like, sort of plonked-in London tourist prop, but it was genuinely yeah, outside. It's one of the things that... Full of condoms and syringes. What was this, um... What was the name <coughs> of the pub? The... Um, Duke of Albany? Yeah, the Duke of Albany. Yeah, in New Cross. This was about... F this was really late at night, wasn't it? I remember... I know, and there were lots of... Even though it was really late at night at four in the morning, there were seven-year-old kids from the... Uh, on bikes, chewing. On chewing. I must admit, I, the oh, oh, the first night we were there, they, we, they threw tennis balls and stuff at us and eggs. And eggs. But by the time we finished, it was... It was, it, was, it was such a great place to work because there was the people at the pub were very welcoming and the the locals really got into the spirit of it and uh, I had a really good couple of nights there. It was real good fun. The barbecue was running. It was really exciting. I know, it was fun. Night shows are always fun. There's me popping. I like to pop in everything I'm in. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not a bad popper. <laughs> now, this is... Um... Nick looks like he's... Entering me anally there. <laughs> <laughs> this is Street Sounds Electro is the album that he throws out of the window, which Electro fans will know is a, a seminal compilation. Who doesn't? That's that funky Porcini poster. That's a great poster. That. Kid Koala there in the background. And also, Cy, you could Cy, Cy Peg, who is an actual DJ. It's not some sort of bastardization of my own name, Cy Peg. But also, you can see on the flies in the background, it says Sean Smiley Riley, because a thing that we kind of like lost from the script, well, when we shot it, was that Sean used to be a DJ and maybe had given it up. And I think in the um, in the Jessica deleted scene, you hear about him being a DJ. Which That's actually kind of the idea. It was a bit silly to have that sidebag thing because people might look at it and think, "Are we trying to make some kind of joke and distract you from the wonder that is uh, Peter Serafinowicz?" I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, you should be sorry. Maybe we should get Cy Beg to apologise as well. Yeah, yeah Cy Beg. Beg. OK. Um, I don't know who Cabbage Boy is in the background now. That's He's it. distracting me from Pete's performance. See, I'm not even listening to it. I like the fact that there's another precursor, a very obvious one, where he says, if you want to live like an animal, go live in the shed, which, of course, he eventually does. Yeah. And also... Was that what your hand, mate? In a second, Nick says... Um, Next time I see him, he's dead, which is, of course, he does. Next time I see him, Pete is dead. That's a bit more obvious, that one. I think you're uh, assuming that everyone that watches this film is dick. No, but <laughs> Pete, Pete said about the thing about the shed and the... Oh, yeah, going, he, he didn't even realise himself. But then Pete is thick. Oh, yeah, he is thick. I forgot that. Yeah. Again! Again. <laughs> Brilliant. I love uh, Pete. I think it's a career best for Pete. I love Pete as a, a performer, but I, he, it's very different in this because he's quite... He's Better than Darth Maul? Easily. Um... 
This was a scene... Th- these kind of shots, actually, just to say, or just on this shot, just not just the music, but also just the look of it and the ratio was very John Carpenter-inspired, and a lot of these... I was trying... Because on Space I ripped off Sam Raimi, I thought, I can't do that again. So this time I'll rip off John Carpenter instead. Well, you've got to rip off someone, haven't you? I know, I haven't got any ideas of my own. Um, this was written after the fact, Penelope Wilton's dialogue here, which um, Simon wrote, and I particularly like the last thing of nowadays a lot of people don't eat meat as another little zombie foreshadowing. I love this transition as well. That was done... Obviously, for real, for real, but not. It's cut though, isn't it? It's, not. it's cut. Basically, Simon sat there for about thirty seconds still, and we just changed the lighting. Gak. That's a good noise, that. I use some of my own saliva to block my windpipe. Now, this for some reason gets the well, not for some reason because we always thought it was funny. Gets the biggest laugh in the film, Cornetto. But not in the states, maybe where Cornettos are called nutty butties. I'm told. Oh, really? Yeah, nutty butty. We actually. Uh, uh, we were in Long Island a couple of weeks ago and we played the film to an audience over there. It went down very well, but nobody laughed at that bit because they don't know what a cornetto is. Now, this, interestingly enough, was the first shot we ever did of the film and yep. we did it before the Saturday version. So this was literally the first thing that we shot, which was quite an ambitious first Over a year slate. ago. Yeah. A year and two weeks ago. Um, you can see Chris Dickens, the editor, running past again. But this time he's sprinting out of now, fear. like a raging Moby. <laughs> um... Yeah, this was fun to do. I've got a bit of a raging Moby. <laughs> um, Into the shop. This no. was really... I mean, th- th- this was shot on a Sunday morning in Crouch End and out of the corner of every frame, a 20 kind of slightly, increasingly irate residents wanting to get to the shop and buy their Sunday papers and get to the cafe and yes. get their kind of croissant. Now, after I free. slips on the blood, though, it sure gets a nice laugh. You can see in the background Orvin, who plays Nelson who is named after a real shopkeeper I always used to visit. Uh, getting up, Road. Um, starting to... There he is, zombieing around in the background. And um, we did originally, actually, before we had the kind of, like, the um, Bollywood music in the um, newsagents, we had two different tracks on there, which we couldn't end up... We couldn't afford in the end, but we had Something in the Air by Thunderclap Newman and we got to get out of this place by the animals as little things on sort of Capital Gold, but... They proved too expensive for a low-budget film like this. Yeah. And to be honest, I think the Bollywood stuff is nicer. I like the fact that you hear that if you if you can speak, uh, is it uh, Hindi, the Hindi, guy speaking? Yeah. He's actually saying the dead are coming back to life, the, the dead are coming back to life. This is not a prank. <laughs> this says. is not, yeah. It's There's Horton, Horton again. again, after having lost his dog and bitten... Mary, although we don't see that in the real film. And there's Tim just coming down the road who will eventually walk into the lounge. You can also see the football there. Gavin's football. This was... Um, I also thought I should have had a bit of blood on the bottom of my shoe there. That was in the script at one point, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah, I, I saw true. footprints in it, but considering oh, I just shit. slipped... Shit, don't point out the deficiencies. There's Christian, Christian Gary Murphy, Murphy, who was very willing... Oh, very, he was extremely professional, wasn't he? They're all extremely... Carol. News readers are professional. That's, That's Nick, Nick Frost's voice, voice yeah. That's Mark Gatiss's voice doing his best David Attenborough. And there's our, there's our hero, Jeremy Thompson, who uh, becomes very much a character in the film. And you can see me reflected in the corner. That's interesting. Vernon Kay, who's Vernon very... Kay. I asked Vernon Kay to do this bit about a year and a half before we actually shot at it. At Glastonbury, wasn't I it? I did. I saw him at Glastonbury. I said, hey, we want you to do this cameo in our film. And he, bless him, he did it. And he went, all right. Like that, this is he's... the Roger McGough line. In the garden, there is a girl. That's my favourite line of the film. There's a girl in the garden, in the garden, there's a girl. Do the Roger, Roger McGough version. There's a girl in the garden. In the garden, there's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and there she is. That was oh, done. Oh, creepy. So we had to do that for wet weather coverage, remember, because we couldn't... Yeah. This was um, shot in a garden in Crouch End. Excuse me. What was the name of the house owner? Gail? Gail, yeah. Yeah, she was lovely. We had to go... Gail. We basically trashed her garden, because this scene, this whole garden scene, took ages to do... And we kept having to come back, and, um, yeah, I think we fucked their lawn up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we fucked their lawn up. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the first ideas we came up with with the film. I remember this from uh, living in Highgate and having a big garden and, and thinking what it would be like to get up and just see one in the garden oh, in yeah. the morning. And this is one of the first sequences we wrote. Well, of, definitely. of them not actually not because you wouldn't you just wouldn't think oh there's a zombie you'd think she's pissed she's got contact lenses on she's you know there's a million kind of permutations you go through before you actually decided it was a zombie well that is the the very early kind of idea for the film was to kind of create a most horror films take place on in the evening 
our idea was to do the bleary, hungover Sunday morning film. So it was always an idea to kind of have this kind of hungover quality to it. Um, yeah, this was fun to film. Nicola was great. She wasn't kind of what I had she in my head for her. Mary at yeah, all. I, 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 when we watched her audition tape, she just had this great tragedy to her performance, you know, that she looked like she was genuinely disappointed that she was dead. Now... Bang. Splodge. On the special effects comparison, you can see exactly how that was done, but suffice to say, Paul Dunn, Stuart Conran and Double Negative all separately rule. It's a combination of physical and digital effects. Absolutely. And very, very good sound good. effects. But this was done... I, yeah, I love how you see the, the guts being sucked back into the hole. I know, you, you'll up. see how that's done later with dog food. Oh, <laughs> good. This is probably my favourite joke in the whole film. Do you remember when we first previewed it, we didn't have that sound effect on and it never got a laugh? Yeah, it and needs then to be. It was when we, you know, stuck the. Reet, reet, reet. Hey! Mark Donovan. Mark Donovan. And incidentally, Nicola uh, Cunningham there as Mary and Mark Donovan <sighs> as the Hulk. That's what we called them. It's never, it's never mentioned in the film, but we called them Mary and the Hulk. Like a children's book. Yeah. All the, all the featured zombies have kind of monikers like Mary the Hulk, the, 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 the groom. The pajama zombie. There's um, there's my '80s Matchbox poster in the background, just plugging myself. There's the airside uh, battle <laughs> royale poster on the wall. Airside went on to do our t-shirts as well, so there's a little uh, yeah. plug for them. <laughs> so you can go and log on and buy Shaun of the Dead t-shirt if you sold got, out. If you've got a grand, completely sold out. Really? Yeah. Holy Moses! This uh, Jeremy again. Jeremy was brilliant. We kind of expanded his part, actually, because we were so bowled over by how... how f he was so willing. He was, he's actually in Volcano as well, if, you wanna, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're a, if you're a Jeremy Thompson completist. Now, that will not work on the pan and scan version with Tim coming in in the corner of the frame. No. So if you're watching this 4x3, you're fucked. <laughs> um, oh, we leave the door open. Hey! Oh, my God! I, said, I actually went up to Tim on the day and said... Do you mind if I shout, he's got an arm off? Because yeah, I didn't want to be flippant about his, his injury. We had a debate about which line was funnier. Always oh, got an arm off, or his arms come off. Or that was and it, the his, former his one. arms off. His arms off. We did that a few times, didn't we, to try and get the brain splat? Yeah. The, uh, you can see Battle Royale very clearly in the background. Luckily, they cleared it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Thank God for that. Um, I love Nick's expression here. This this is, is a, that's the point when Ed changes. Yeah. That's Ed. That's Ed's mind going. His mechanism flipping. We always thought of this as a bit to make a little nod to Dawn of the Dead. We like the idea of Ed having a, a bit of a Roger, a Roger kind of flip out. He has a Roger. He has a Roger. That like Roger's character in Dawn of the oh, Dead. Oh, Roger, as kind in, of all... yeah, perfect baby, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of my favourite lines. Look at my red neck. I'm so tired there. That was that day I hadn't slept the night before, and I was just in a mess. Enjoying the brain. Classic zombie line. Good neck. Removing the head or oh, destroying the brain. I love the music in this. Now, how bloody long did it take us to shoot? I mean, the reverses and everything. There, a lot it of was these... over like four weeks. Yeah. It? it kept going back because the weather was so shite. Yeah, this was a very difficult thing to do. This is. Uh, these props are fantastic, these little kind of rubber props and stuff. I like the toasters particularly. Boom. Bonk. Good sound effects. A mug tree. The. A very pathetic zombie weapon, a mug tree. You wouldn't get that in. You wouldn't get that in Dawn of the Dead remake, would you? If you, <laughs> if you notice, actually, me and Nick are so because we were quite sort of fatherly around Nicola, we we chucked everything at Mark. I think I got to really plumb the uh, rushes for actual shots of us throwing things at Nicola. We did. Um, ha we did have a thing where we had a trust exercise. Um, where we threw things at each other, and on the first take with this, where we threw a rubber record, it hit Mark straight in the eye. Oh, that's right. It's awful. You, I felt really eye. bad. That's why his eyes all closed over. Yeah. Now, these are CG uh, records, right? Some of them are. Some of them are real, some of them are CG. Now, this was a very difficult scene to clear, actually, because um, all of the albums that you see the artwork for, we had to get the signatures of all the existing band members, like New Order and Sade, and Sade's real name is... Helen. So thank you very much, Helen. She now, great. Stone Roses, Second Coming. What's yeah, I do like it. I think that, that the joke is very true, and it's, uh, I think it's an ongoing dispute in indie culture. I am a Prince fan as well, but even I will concede that Batman was the start of the downturn. Yeah. Although Diamonds and Pearls is quite good after that. Oh, shut up. 
<laughs> I really enjoyed jumping through that door. That was great fun. I remember phoning my girlfriend and saying, I'm about to jump through a door because I was slightly worried, but secretly I was really excited. I like this shout. Dummies. Clonk. Clonk. Wham. We rehearsed this. I don't know if it'll be on the extras, but there's a, there's a rehearsal footage somewhere of me and Nick pummeling a crash mat. Uh, rehearsing this kind of synchronised battle. What did you? What did it say in the script? A baptism, a baptism of, gore. of gore. Great cut. Now the idea with the cornetto is that that is actually my hangover cure. Um, is it? I worked this out in college that an ice cream was you a good thing. You didn't go to college. A good thing for a hangover. However, I my girlfriend tried it and honked up I big time. Okay. <laughs> really? Your my, girlfriend my, at the time. My beard tried it. Um. <laughs> This was originally supposed to be in Pete's bedroom, or there was a whole scene in Pete's bedroom. Oh, which yeah, on we, the landing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, which we had to cut out because we were running out of time they massively. Went in and we had to fr- try and figure out a way that they would see his keys, and that's why we had them hanging on the wall. And in the scene, Nick started rifling through Pete's drawers and found his, like, um, his porn. Asian babes porn No, no, collection. what kind of porn was it? it was a oh, no, fat girls porn. It was porn. fat girls, because there's a line that we cut out earlier on where he says he slept with a fat girl. Yeah, and he has, like, kind of um, plus-size porn. yeah. Over over sixteen, forty plus. Oh, I don't know. Maybe things like that. Let's not be body fascists. Come on. Um, There's some pictures that me and Kate had done in a photo booth in Ealing four or five weeks. No, probably nine weeks previous to this scene. I really like this scene. This is fun. Yes. Penelope Wilton. Our first inclination of her, the beautiful Penelope Wilton. We tried to do a thing with all of the stuff in Shaun of the Dead, where like, to create a bit more realism to it. You don't kind of see it all revolves around Sean apart from with one exception and even to phone calls you only hear disembodied voices just to create is the word versimilitude is that oh, what I'm looking for geez. is that I what I'm looking for you should use it even if you don't need it versimilitude versimilitude but I really like this idea of it just being you know kind of like sort of only seeing it from Sean's point of view only what he can see and hear immediately around him this is one of the very first lines we wrote in fact we used to say this in pitch meetings when we were going in with talking to our execs and stuff about Sean saying we may have to kill my stepdad yeah, yeah, yeah. reference there so, to Night, Night of the, the Living Dead. Dead I actually when we spoke to George Romero on the phone after he'd seen it he, he, was, he really he, was, he really really enjoyed it and was, was going on about how much he loved it and I said did you get the night reference and he went no <laughs> I said, you know when we said we're coming to get you Barbara and, he, and he, there was a silence and he went oh yeah and he actually didn't get it when he first watched it the um, this music is from Dawn of the Dead. This is Zombie by Goblin, classic track by Acid it's Jazz. That, it's on prog the soundtrack, rockers. isn't it? Mixed with Zombie by Kerncroft. Exactly. Combination. Um, I like this scene. That gets a big laugh. Get behind. Get, talk about your reason for that. The whole the gay thing, because that was like you remember saying about when you were at school about even if you were expressing. Yeah, I always used to think it was a funny that sort of like a, uh, I think that me and Dave Walliams both found amusing is that when you're at school and you said that you fancied a girl people would go <laughs> gay <laughs> so if you were heterosexual and you expressed a heterosexual urge at primary school you would be, get called gay it was just the very act of being emotional was considered which you know there was a Darling Buds and May reference I suppose gay very moments. important uh, yeah, perfect, perfect. Uh, the state of it where's safe where's this, I suppose, in a way, is the most spacey sequence in the film. You can still see Tim Bagley's body lying behind. Take calm, go to mum's. Bill made some really funny noises that first day when he was a zombie. He kept going. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Winchester. You can see Bernie and John in the background. Bernie and John are actually. Yeah, boy. Flavor Flav, based on real people who uh, were the landlord and lady of a pub in Highgate called The Shepherds, on which the Winchester is based. And um, Not weirdly enough, the next pub down from The Shepherds is it's the, called Winchester. the Winchester. Yeah, but it, was, it never actually yeah, was anything to, to do with that pub. It had to be named after a gun. It's not a minder reference, unfortunately. No. It's funny, actually, that I've um, heard some of the people going on about references in this film which just aren't there like loads and loads of uh, yeah this is this and this is that like they said the, the, the hole in Mary's stomach is a reference to death becomes her it's not a reference which is it's not. just ripped off from it well no I mean, <laughs> but it's no, no more than it is from uh, Quick Queen of the, the Dead, Dead or, or Terminator 2 Terminator 2 or uh, Natural Born Killers it's just that we wanted to see the extent of Mary's wound if you'll forgive the Slightly disgusting imagery, uh, <laughs> and, and and Sean and Ed's dis- <laughs> reaction to it. This, um, I like the sound effects in this. 
Doing the sound effects on this kind of stuff is such a laugh. This is an amazing throw, but I, I did do it 25 times to get that throw. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, someone's in the shower. Who is it? This was the last day of the shoot, wasn't it? Or the second it was from one last of the last day. days, yeah. Pete was back in. Pete's makeup took ages. Because his whole body, Jane Buxton uh, did a fantastic job on the makeup. The, the zombie makeup was really, really. Jane Walker and Jane Buxton. Sorry, Jane Walker. Like yeah, Jane yeah. Buxton. What am I talking about? Jane, no, it wasn't Jane Buxton. Jane Buxton's on, on space. Sorry, Jane. Jane Walker oh, and Candy Spanks, her um, her uh, assistant, uh, did a, an amazing job on the makeup. A very subtle sort of zombie makeup. It was all done with kind of like veins and paling and all this kind of stuff. And the contacts. We had people on set, contact wranglers on set. So. The, um, also worth mentioning, Annie Hardinge as well, who did the costumes, so you'll notice the zombies have a very wonderful sort of muted colour to them. Now, that when, there was one take of that that we used initially where Gavin, he hit you in the ear and he couldn't stop laughing. Oh, yeah. And it whipped round to him and he had a big grin on his face. Now, I wish, one of my reservations about the film, if I'd have fucking thought about it, it would have got such a bigger laugh for have Nick to clonk the kid on the head with his spade. Oh, right. Why didn't he just whack him round the chops? That would have got a massive laugh. Sure hit, hitting a the kid. There's but a bunch of zombies. It might have got us on 18. Including my friend Tony amongst those zombies. Um, this here, the radio voice, is the lovely Julia Davis. Of 90 Night fame. Of 90 Night fame and human remains. Um, uh, there's uh, our friends Sam and Daisy there. I love the fact that the mum drags the son back into the house, the body uh, who bag. Who was in the body bag? I can't remember. That was Dale Winton. <laughs> um, that sounds like a bit of... All around, all around Cratch End, isn't it? The, yeah. The, the reservoir top. That guy, that was a, a stuntman called Ray. And actually there's two stuntmen doing that bit, because this was done, this is in Finsbury Park, and it cuts back to Crouch End. We had to quite, this is quite difficult doing this. It was pissing down with rain this day. And here we have Christopher Harwood, who's playing the grizzled zombie, who is also an amputee. Uh, not, he's not brilliant at yoga. <laughs> such a false leg. <laughs> he's a lovely guy as well. Did some great... Uh, this is another one of the first things we did, wasn't it? It was one of the, one of the first... first jokes we thought up, I think. Yeah, you, definitely. You're right. In fact, we nearly cut this out on several occasions from the writing process, but I'm glad we didn't. It's yeah. funny. This is Orpheus by Ash which uh, one of the many Ash songs in the soundtrack. There's the jazz. Actually, this is the demo of, of Orpheus. It's not actually the album version. Um, yeah, this was, this was shot in Abbott's Gardens in East Finchley and uh, a very nice little kind of suburb. The, uh, There's some kind of truth to that, isn't there, the wood story? No, none at all. OK. The... Um, <laughs> I kept I kept forgetting to, to zip up my coat on the way out. I remember they having to do this several times and falling over a lot, hurting myself. Now, oh, go to the... Uh, if you want to f uh, watch... If you want to listen to another commentary, listen to the actor's one and listen to Nick explain why he's got a hole in his hair. Yes. I'm sure he will explain when we do We're it doing tomorrow. more trailers for other commentaries than we are doing our own commentary. Oh, don't be so wet. Um, <laughs> this was a... Quite a long and involved study camp shot, which is, actually took ages because we are in a tiny house. Not in the same house that we shot the exterior at, but... Um, it was still in Abbott's Gardens, though, wasn't it? It was still in Abbott's Gardens, just down the road. I can't remember the name of the lady who owned this house, but she was very nice. You can actually hear the sound of a washing <laughs> machine in the background winding down, which is to cover up all the traipsing footsteps of the entire crew. I love Penelope's reaction there when she says, OK. I know, she's great. Penelope's fantastic. She's fantastic. We, I remember when we, we got Penelope in, and uh, um, we were always very keen on Penelope playing Barbara because she's got a wonderful um, haunted look. She can look very haunted when she wants to, despite being a, a, a corker. And also, me and Simon both fancied her in ever decreasing circles. Oh, now she knows now. Yeah. Um, so, where we got her into Ealing and we sat and we spoke at her really for an hour, just telling her how what we wanted to, you know, the part to be about and stuff. And we kind of had her at hello, really, didn't we? I think she sort of said, she sort of said as much at the end because she'd read the script, but she wasn't entirely sure Wee. about her character. J boo, jump, boo. I like this kind of low angle shot. It looks like something from The Servant. Like there was some very strangely sort of like sixties kind of feel to it. This little bit. There were some very funny reactions from Bill that we didn't actually put in when I was poking the cricket bat in his face. Uh, he yeah, was, he was really uh, clowning around. I like this bit. Didn't get the doctor, did you? 
Oh, God. Well, that judgment in the Isle of Wight. <laughs> this, that joke changed several times. It was like the Silly Isles, then it was the Isle of, Isle of Man. Jersey. Jersey, and then it was the Isle of Wight. Isle of Man we took out as a punchline because... You love men. I, I, love, I love Lucy. Too late, you've said it. Um, <laughs> Isle of Man. You've said it already. All right. You've come Surely out be on the Isle commentary. Of, Isle of Man. to do it. This was, this was a scene actually was quite fortuitous because we were really up against time and we ended up... I love man. We, could, we ended up shooting this all in one shot, which actually makes the scene a lot better and it's kind of like a bit of a Woody Allen shot, you know, shooting kind of like an Ooh, entire... Fight yourself. <laughs> no, 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 just in terms... I remember, like, because I, I was going to do this with all close-ups and everything and then because we were out of time, it's just doing one shot and it, it just makes it so much funnier. I also, if I can point out what I believe you're doing here, which I really like, which is incredibly subtle... It's just that really slow creep in as the uh, as the scene progresses. It just kind of adds the builds the tension. That's what's technically called a little creep. <laughs> You're what's technically called a little, a little creep. creep. Yeah, I'm being five foot seven. <laughs> <laughs> Good use of motherfucker. Good use of incest gags. Yeah, we have to give a little nod to Graham Linehan, who pointed us in the direction of that gag. He said we were missing a trick with this bit. So, not to give him any more Graham credit. Lennon, of course, the writer of Father Ted, uh, along with Arthur Matthews. And um, uh, you'll know, you know Graham Lennon if you know your comedy. So, he, he did put us into that joke, but then he also did suggest... Does it have to be zombies? Yeah, he said that we shouldn't have zombies in the film, so... I love Bill's like a, <laughs> Bill's like a cowboy Bless there. Come I know. On, I remember saying to Bill that I said, uh, I said it's like Clint Eastwood on Benelin. <laughs> <laughs> he like swaggers in like sort of like a... a, like a a gunfighter who's had too much night nurse. He, st- he staggers in like a Benelin Clint. Benelin Clint. And we are following you, are we? He's great. We're following you, are we? I got wood. No, tell... You, 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 you said you'd re- do this joke, didn't you? Yeah, I think the... Um, yeah, I, I would have re-blocked it. I think the car should have been more fucked as well. It should have been a bit more crashed. But, you know, I forgive him, you know... There's Kia Next coming time. in, oh, one of our clubber zombies, who takes a chunk out of Philip. So they're the same zombies you see in the credits, basically. Followed by Matt James. Now, they did their own stunt. They weren't really stuntmen here, so I think they did a pretty good job of being knocked about. Jeff, our stunt coordinator, did a lot of work with non-stuntmen, which was great. Jeff Hewitt Davis, is worth mentioning, has been with us for a long time since we did Space, and we had our fight workshops for the second series of Space with Jeff. He is an Olympic gymnast and a thoroughly nice man, and, and doubles for me a couple of times in the car when driving. I always thought in that bit, I wish I'd directed that bit better, because, like, Bill and Penelope look utterly unfazed by what's going on. I like it, because they're so it's quite funny. They're like, they're sort of... It's I funny. Love the art department were, were wonderful for... for, for minor to tiny details like and there would always be just bits of people and toys and detritus in the streets that was just every little thing told a story it was great you don't see half of it this was a these stunts actually ended up a lot more dangerous than i actually imagined it sort of like on the day it was getting more and more complicated and i was quite pleased there was a lot of good stunt drivers a lot of i think we kind of caught um we caught Bond on an off year because a lot of the kind of drivers in this were all kind of people who worked on Dying of the Day and, like, you know... But I like the idea of doing kind of, like, quite dangerous stunts on suburban streets. That's why we filmed it all in Barnet, because <laughs> Barnet has very wide roads and it's easier to do stunt work of there. Of course. Love God bless Barnet. Now, this is a, this is a nice shot, because this is all in... Can I just say that, like, that watch the leather is from Days... Well, it's not from Days and Confused, but it, it reminds me of uh, Matthew McConaughey oh. in Days and Confused. I love this show. It's really Boom. good doing it all in one. Very. Different. Now that's an old university friend of mine called John Carnell, who uh, I've known for a very long time. Who who just looks like a qualified stuntman in that fall. It's amazing. He spins in the air. Oh, blood in me. Oh, there's a couple of pensioners. I like this. What am I gonna do? Wham! That's a David Dunlap special. That one zooming in. David, David Dunlap, Dunlap our DP, was the camera operator on Goodfellas and Raising Arizona. And in that last shot, zooming in. On Simon, I think it, it's quite like some of the shots in Goodfellas. It's what we call a Goodfellas crash and zoom special. Incidentally, in a, a, a point of uh, trivia, in, in Raising Arizona, when High takes the picture of himself and Holly Hunter with the baby, it's David's camera, David Dunlap's own camera. I like this little bit. It's when, like, you um, climbing up Temple of Doom style. Do you remember when I came... Bat first. Originally, when I came through the uh, window, I went, Oh, bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> but we cut it out. It's, um... And there's uh, our three. Look at Dylan. <laughs> I love Dylan when he goes, I'm not going out there. You you don't know so I said that like, Dylan is in my landlord's rugby colours, unfortunately. You hate your landlord. <laughs> 
I do not hate my landlord. He's lovely. I can't, all that's come in out fact, of this because... country so far is that your racist, homophobic, and hate your landlord. <laughs> <laughs> We have to get out of here. If we don't... Right, get out of here. Pieces, can't speak. I remember when we wrote this in the script, we called this your BAFTA clip. It was like the idea... It was, it was, How this, ironic. This is like the... Uh, kind of like the, the Hugh Grant running back moment. Uh, as uh, 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 the Partridge family said in... <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> it Four Weddings and a Funeral. Does he make a Partridge family he reference? He says that about David Cassidy, doesn't he? Uh, David Cassidy one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the... Is it raining? I hadn't noticed. ...wall of talent... <laughs> Uh, there, in Moran, in in Davis, Ashfield. and in Ashfield. Kate Ashton. Peggy Ashcroft. Karen Ashton, as we used to call her. Karen Ashton, Debbie Ashby. Great. Okay. Uh, and Lucy Davis, who you should never call so baby carrot to her face because she hates it. <laughs> She'll kill you for that. Um... Ah, uh, that was. This is another was, one of our first ever written lines about. Yeah, I don't see the point in owning, owning a car in London. Which I only gets a laugh in London. That one. Get Clonk. That, no, that, the, <laughs> the first time I did that, I really hurt my head. You'll see that on the outtakes, actually. That was something that came up on the day. We're going to the Winchester. That's my ash. That's my ash. Oh, bang. Now, I had to do this and the previous one coming across a 14 times each. It was a really hot day. I had a great workout. Bang. Crap. A lot of these people, again, aren't stunt people, so they did a bloody... This, like this guy. Hit. Bang. Wow. He's good. My friend, there's a couple of my friends there, Emma and Gavin in the background. These three guys are really good, they're really Wayne up for it. was one, he was one of the guys, wasn't they? Now, there's another version of this line on the deleted scenes, which is even ruder. <laughs> it, it was also funny. It was, I, I, I was a bit naughty actually with Working Title because they did say to me at one point, could we do, for an airline version, could we do clean versions of some of the lines? And I said that we wouldn't have time to do any alternate versions of the dialogue. However, on that occasion, we did two alternate versions, and they were both X-rated, so yeah. it kind of made a mockery of my premise. You do make a mockery of a lot this of is, things. Oh, now these, those kind of car stunts are very scary to film. Even though you're going at 12 miles an hour, you basically speed up the camera a little bit, but even so... Remember that guy came off and he banged his head and his brain yeah, fell out? Yeah, I think you see... He's, what, sorry? His brain fell out of his ear. <laughs> and then I run over and then I ate it. It's very strange, kind of, like, spending... It's quite upsetting, kind of, like, sort of shooting those kind of stunts. We spent... What was probably I think it was a year ago now we were in the Jag, but we spent about eight days in the back of this Jag with with just me, Nick, Penelope, and Bill, and then with Lucy, Dylan, and Kate, and had such a laugh. It could have been a terrible time, but we would, you know, we kept our spirits up with jokes and stories well, and songs. I am. Um, I was sitting on the low loader. Watching the monitor. Explain what a low loader is. Low loader is like the trailer that the car sits on where the cameras are. And I was sitting there watching a tiny monitor with a black cloth over my head because of the sun. And I have never felt so seasick or physically ill at the end of a shooting day. It was horrible. Because of the motion. It's just the, the motion and trying to concentrate on a tiny monitor. But this, this is a really tough scene to film. And it was always the, always the idea I wanted to do like a you know, have a scene where there's kind of like an ensemble scene with too many people in one car. But also to the, the idea of having essentially what is a deathbed scene, which would be like, you know, Bill Nye's great big BAFTA clip deathbed scene, mm -hmm. but doing it in a jag. So it's kind of a little bit of artistic license that the others can't hear it. So you just do that by cropping them out of the shot. We I like love this music as well. Dan did a beautiful piece here, which reminds me of the music at the end of Dirty Harry. We, uh, we like the idea of, of, of building up Philip to be basically essentially a, a monstrous guy, but then as you kind of realise that Sean was as much to blame for their relationship as he was, and he turns out to be a, a very sweet man, and then he turns into an actual monster. This was quite a... Um, this Ooh. stunt was done by... I can't remember the driver's name, but he was, uh, he was another die another day guy. Hey. I, this is the, in this, it was this scene where I punched Nick in the back and nearly broke his shoulder and he had to have an injection up his bum, which I think you can also see, like there. But I was hitting the chair, but originally I hit him in the back of the shoulder and I really hurt him. Because I'm strong. Powerful, this, um, powerful guy. A powerful punch. I think in the original script we had the jag exploding, but then we took that out to save money. Oh, yeah, the jag. <laughs> that's it. Everyone jumped out of the car when it was moving and then the jag exploded. Now, yeah. Bill's eyes here, he's wearing contact lenses, brilliant contact lenses, but then also they did some double negative, did some computer work on these, which make them look extra spooky. Mr. Mental by 80s Matchbox on the stereo. And there are a lot of people kind of... There's zombies in this scene. There's quite a few people from the neighbourhood in Barnet who wanted to join in, because I think we shot this on a Sunday. Yeah, we did. There's a couple of people here that sort of like... There's some really good zombies in this bit. I like the sound effects in this as well. 
Here's some friends of mine. Here they are, Luke and Natasha. Um, Another one of our amputee actors there as well. What about the blunt objects? Do you want to get them? This was a this was a joke that was one of the first jokes that we wrote, I think. Or of him switching the radio off. Yeah, I really like this bit. Okay, I know it looks like him, but there is nothing of the man you loved in that car now. Nothing. Oh, Penelope. Clong. Oh, I got lost in I got lost in the moment then. <laughs> <laughs> he actually does an audible sigh as well, doesn't he? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Nick lighting up a fag. Here we are in the back alleys of uh, still in East Finchley, aren't we? No, this is in Barnet. This Barnet, is in yeah, Barnet. Sorry. This was uh, this is all shot on a Sunday as well. I, remember. I think we ADR this whole scene, didn't we? Because there was a yeah, lots of tramping from yeah. the Steadicam shot. Lots of great Steadicam work in this by a number of people, Tony and Paul particularly. They're snake hips. You see him in the pub earlier on, surrounded by women because they say by, earlier on, yeah, he's always, always surrounded, surrounded by, by women. women, and there he is, surrounded by female zombies. Eaters. Get it? Now, if you look at that zombie bit again, what's quite funny is that the zombies are being quite dainty eaters. I think because we only did a couple of takes of that, I forgot to tell them to really go for it, and they were being quite picky and choosy over their food. If you look at it again, they were all girls, very polite, they? posh. Like it was like a little zombie buffet. They weren't really it was like going canapes. for it. It was the exactly. Starters. Exactly. But that was uh, Stuart, who played Snake Hips, was buried in the ground, and he had a fake body put on top with his guts hanging out. And Stuart he comes. Powell. Hey! Oh, what a lineup! It's like comedy happy families. Is it Daisy from Space. It's Tim from The Office. You've got Tim and Daisy, Tim and Dawn. You've got Frank, uh, uh, Bernard and Fran. You've got Edward, but no tubs. You've got kind of uh, Matt Lucas. You got Marsha from Space. It's all happening. I want to. Work, I, we haven't done. I haven't, haven't worked with Steve Pemberton actually. I really would like to work with Steve because he's a fantastic actor. Matt Lucas, interestingly, is wearing the original Ed T-shirt, which is I Heart Pussy, the one that was considered too rude for yeah. the film. <laughs> but probably a good thing because I think I Got Wood is funnier. But also, Martin Freeman looks at his watch there, trying to upstage and succeeding. Martin Freeman trying to upstage Jessica of Arthur Dent fame. Reese currently shooting. Uh, there's Julia Deacon, of course. Was, let's not forget Julia, who plays Marsha, almost unrecognisable because uh, she's when she plays Marsha, she's so sort of heavily made up. In her hello, Brian. Ta Tamsin Greg, every time I see her, kind of says that, and I look so much like Lucy Davis. I know. <laughs> Lovely Tamsin Greg. Del Boy's falling through the bar. Oh, come on. No, that's great. I love that bit. It, oh, it never fails to get a big woofer. In fact, I'm. I'm See, Leslie Nielsen and the Germans have got it right. Sometimes only slapstick will do. It's true. It's Not, true. As, I do love a big woofer. <laughs> this was... Um, you can actually see, like... I don't know if you can spot the dead wife on the floor there, which is quite grim. And there's big Nick Ewans there as the uh, pyjama zombie. Or as Nick called him, the MP for Zombie North. <laughs> he said he looked like an MP zombie. Uh, this was all done in Barnet as well. Loads of gardens, interconnecting gardens. Very... We spent a long time in this garden. I think we fucked their lawn up as well, I'm sorry. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck lawns. <laughs> now if you this... want to make an omelette, you've got to break a few lawns. <laughs> make a zomblet. No. I can't believe I just That's not that. me. That is me. That, that is, is me. We had a stuntman, I think his name was Michael, a, a protege of uh, Jeff's who did the initial jump. I was terrified doing the jump over, even though I was up quite high because I thought I was going to land and break my hip. Well, also because it got to the end of the day, I made you that last role. You really went for it. And Ronaldo, who is our um, Ronaldo Vasconcellos, who's our amazing line producer, went fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, you must not do this. This is ridiculous. He you was, cannot do it. He is having he's from Wales, little Wales. Brazilian kittens. Clong. He really told me off, and I was like, "Oh, come on!" He goes, "No, it is stupid." <laughs> I like in the a fact, very fatherly way. I like the fact that Nick is texting through this entire battle. I know. And Harry Potter's doing absolutely fuck all. Here's the, the swing ball. Now this, initially, there was this whole thing where he had him around the neck and he was dragging him around and then... It was, it was funny, my... Yeah. Stab it! That was very... Stick him, Holmes! Stick him, Holmes. I should do no such thing, Watson. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a much longer that... We did it originally write it as being a much more army of darkness type yeah. battle of like with the swing ball, but then we thought the funnier thing would be to do it so it's just pathetic. Now, bear in mind, now, Penelope, uh, as Barbara, has now been bitten and she's keeping it... And if you watch her, she plays it so well. She's putting tissues up her she's sleeve constantly. She's sticking tissues she's hiding it. <laughs> I love it. This was done in a... These are two separate places. This is New Cross... 
and the other shot was back was in Barnet. But this is in New Cross now, overlooking the uh, the Duke of Albany. Now this this shot, as Simon said earlier, with the New Cross residents in the background there, you can about thirty extra zombies who were just from the neighbourhood who wanted to join in. A lot of kids. Good, I love if you listen. Quite, if you listen here, you can hear you rubbing your goatee, which I think is really nice on this bit. It's good. I like Dylan improvised the line "Captain Wow," which is very nice. Captain Wow. Captain Wow. I don't. I, I think that's a bit of an over the top expression for me there. The expression. Yeah. Now we tried to do a thing. It was a very hard special effect to pull off, but we tried to do Nick walk. Uh, uh, the pajama zombie walking along his pole. You'll see there that it's right up at the end now. Yeah. And um, it, it was didn't entirely come to pull off. off. It, was it also kind of held up the action a little bit as well. We didn't, yeah. We didn't really want to stop for any effects and stuff. But. Initially in the script, he walked all the way up to the ball, but then we realised that you can't do that because there's this the, the, the coil the, thing the coil at the, end. At the top. Okay. Let's try, shall we? Let's not talk through Lucy's bit, come on. All right, let's have a look at Lucy Davis and enjoy what she's doing. Some baby cow action. She's playing... Some what? Baby cow action. She's a baby cow. <laughs> baby cow action. Is she working for Coogan? Um, uh, we, just mi- we just missed about, like, loads of great bits there. Well, why don't you go back over it then and talk about Maybe what we do missed. Let's do another commentary in about half an hour. Let's do a time. commentary on our commentary. Yeah. <laughs> This was, uh, you'll see on the outtakes, there's some funny outtakes. Look at him, I was fucking laughing there. He's, he would be... <laughs> I think this is one of the original bits we wrote as well. I like the fact yeah. you do a, like a bub impression there from day of the day, and it's nice. I think Nick uh, takes, his, takes his place alongside Bob now in the... Uh... Now watch, watch Nick in this next shot. Look at him there, doing his uh, very juvenile... He looks like a scene from My Left Zombie. <laughs> A zombie Christy Brown. There's the, a zombie uh, Jerry Deacon. There's Bubs. Uh, there's Bubs, Bubs in the background. Peter. There's Lawrence, <laughs> who you see later on, who's got the frizzy hair. Though he's just onto the right of screen. Um, this was. I mean, this was uh, some of the first stuff that we shot in New Cross on Steadicam. In there, it's like a zombie Mardi Gras kind of walking through the crowds. And we've also got our uh, our zombie twins as well. Uh, which I think was the first. That's my friend Liz, who came along and agreed to be... Uh, the Zombie on Wheels? The Zombie on Wheels. This music by Dan, I think, is great. It, it's got, like, a cowbell in it, like, Low Rider by War. Yeah? That's right. <laughs> Very nice. Very this is, nice. um... Tires, there's Michael Smiley in the background. Oh, yeah, The Zombie Tires. Here's our little space reference. I'm actually meeting Michael later on. It's Patricia again who spots them. It's like she's cheesed off with them for all the X-rated talk earlier. Now, this was a really difficult scene to film because I remember, like, it was cloudy for half the day and then the sun came out and it made it really difficult oh, that's to shoot. Right. It was tough, wasn't it? It was a bummer. But, um, yeah, this is probably the most zombies we ever had on one day. <laughs> and you can hear here race... Did you choose that, uh, particular that tone? Ringtone? No, Hack and Back, as the sound people did. You can hear Rafe Spall in the background... Unless you didn't spot that before. Currently still alive. Like this. Bonk. Hey, what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing, you stupid moron? Fuck, oh. fuck off. Fuck off. I like the fact you have a raging row fuck, fuck when you're off. completely surrounded by zombies. I know, angry. I like also the fact that the zombies stop, which is a, a phenomenon. Was this hitherto too un kind of like charted in zombie territory that they kind of like they pause. There's like a what's the time, Mr. Zombie thing going on. I know, here. yeah. <laughs> I love, the, I love Simba, uh, who you'll see in a second. Uh, there he is. I love the fact he's testing the air with his zombie nose. <laughs> Did, what are you doing? That's from. But that's a kind of a space reference, I guess, isn't it? Which came from Clonk. from Bill Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah from, from Bill Bailey. Is it Bill doing? Bailey? Is it Bill Bailey? You can you can trace what you're doing all the way back to 1998. In fact, probably before. This was a fun thing to do. That shat me up good the first time I did that, because they all came up really outtakes. fast. That's on the outtakes. Oh, cool. That was really scary. There was, a shot, there was a shot where um, Michael was really in the thick of it, and I had to retake it because I thought it would distract the eye too much. He's the only zombie not wearing the kind of zombie colours, which is the sort of muted uh, beiges and greens and what have you. Oh, yeah. He we sort of stands out because he's got his, his, his uh, Eddie Merckx. Hat, hat on. Yeah, we asked the zo- we asked Annie, the costume person, to make sure none of the zombies were in primary colours, so they all looked like a sort of muted brown. Ooh. This was quite a late joke, wasn't it? That we decided that, that oh. Barbara would find her flowers and yeah, realise yeah, yeah. that they were actually for her. I love that. I love the fact. The sick. Oh, listen to me. I love it. You're Bigging so up, up yourself. I'll be up you in a minute. Oh, <laughs> hang on, that doesn't work. I love men. <laughs> 
I Love Man. The I Love Man. I mean, Mankind. This was originally a whole 360 shot, but... And Man. We... And it was a really nice shot as well, but, like, we did have to tighten up the film a bit and stuff. Now, here we are in what was uh, the biggest undertaking in the whole shoot, I guess, was the pub. Um, this was a, a fabulous set at Ealing Studios. By the marvellous Marcus Rowlands, the production designer. The detail of which was so amazingly specific. There, were, there, was, the, 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 there was a bit of tinsel in a massive bottle full of money, and for me that sums up the whole set. It was just spot on. They had everything in there. They had kind of like just stuff in drawers that would never get opened, you know, kind of, of, of yeah. pub gubbins. Pub gubbins, pipes. You know, VAT returns and stuff, all sorts of things, cash and carry receipts. I had a pipe for a lot of it, do you remember? Because I, uh, I found it on... Oh, also, the, kind of the pumps worked, and at the end of the night, me and the art department would have a swift half. Yeah, uh, a, a nice pint of beer. Um, this was... a. Uh, we wanted to do, basically this is the only scene of the film obviously where Sean is not the centre of attention we wanted to, basically we had all these rules to the film which yeah, we for a piss actually <laughs> we had all these rules in the film which we then kind of uh, there's always an exception to like Sean should be the centre of every scene except this one we should have no screaming which uh, you know there is a couple there is a couple and we should have no space style inserts of which there is a couple yeah <laughs> it's always good to break your own rules look at Penelope she's in pain I know she's Putting lots of tissues up her sleeve to cover up the bite. That is a great, um, a great r- a nose rub by doing that. Uh, I like it when Nick says, "You did that, you twat." <laughs> Nick is leaning on an U.R. Dracula fruit machine, which uh, had some particularly good noises. Which originally we were going to start the film with the jingles from the U.R. Dracula. I love Kate's performance here. It's really funny when she goes, "Have to make the best of it." <laughs> And there's another thing that kind of gets we, we we trimmed out, but the idea is that all three of them are teachers. I don't think we ever mentioned that Kate is a teacher anymore. Or do we? Maybe we do in the do scene. She's head, of head of English. But it was the idea of like them all three being teachers, and hence the, some of the dialogue. We have to make the best of it, and you know, just being kind of um, reprimanding each other. We, had, we should have marketed ways. hog lumps as an actual product. We actually had them at the premiere. They were nibbles. My brother designed the packet for hog lumps, which said hog lumps, and then underneath a, uh, a red hairy pig's pork snacks. <laughs> hairy pork rind. That's a hairy pork rind. But they were real. Um, yeah, we had. I love that. Of them. That's a very funny cheesy shot of uh, Nick and Kate. Then when I come back in, they're, they're I know. both them looking at me like I'm, like in Mr. Brilliant. I think the fact that Nick looks more convincingly in love with you with Kate says a lot. Well, see, he is. I think this is basically gay, this gay is basically me. this is basically a gay romance. This film. It is. It is a. There is a great homoerotic subtext in this. Silence. I was just thinking about it. I was thinking about it as well. You love men. Um, I love man. I love man. Um, that there was you kind go. of a, a lot of people picked up on that being a, a, um, a reference. Basically, it wasn't. It was just we just used the same joke again. And then we remembered afterwards that we'd we already done that. Joke. I thought this seems this feels really familiar. This was a lot lot longer. This bit, and you'll see it on the deleted scenes. But um, it was one of the bits that had to be cut down sort of quite a lot. I always there's, I like this joke about the performing monkey, but it's one of the bits in the film where whenever I watch it, I think of a, a different punchline to the scene. Because um, I remember when we wrote this, we always thought that's such a killer line, and. Uh, it is funny, but it's not. It, it needs like another punchline. This, but it's still good. I like. I like Dylan glowering in the corner there, really pissed off. Which Dylan does very well when he wants to. I think sometimes Dylan was pissed off with us. No, I don't. I... <laughs> Dylan. Dylan's got a great sort of uh, shell of surliness, but inside he's such a big gooey sweet guy. I know. I mean, I've, I've known Dylan for a very long time. For twelve years, I've doing the circuit and stuff, and. We'd seen each other at gigs and always spoken and always got on really well, but it wasn't until doing this film that we actually sort of got to know each other properly and spent some time and talked. And I remember saying to him on the last on his last day that it was nice to meet you finally. Because uh, don't be fooled by his grumpy misanthropope. Don't, don't be, he's not Bernard Black. He can be. He's a soppy old wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. He's I've a soppy lost it. wallet. It's only like quarter to two in the afternoon, but I feel my brain's gone to mush. Really? Yeah. Now, this shot here, this was originally one long Steadicam shot, but if you look in this shot, you can spot Paul K in the corner, Dennis Pennis himself, any second now. There, there he is, is on the right, Paul Kay. my K. sister just behind him. And off. 
I like the two kiddie zombies down. So that's Zoe, isn't it? It was Heather Oscar's neighbour's daughter. That's right. And uh, and it, that's supposed to be zombie Bernie, the landlady, trying Bernie. to get out. I like that shot. That's kind of a bit of an evil dead shot. Lucy looks lovely there. Look at her. She looks like a, a matinee idol. Now, the the, clearing all these test cards was... A, Fucking nightmare. Karen Beaver, who's our production manager, basically did all the TV stuff and... Um, Karen worked on space as well. Karen worked on space, but like things like this... Cl- Clearing all these different TV channels is a major epic undertaking. So hats off, hats off to Karen. Clearance is actually an issue that not, I'd never realised until I started doing this business. But is an it is a it's just a minefield. You can you know there are things you can't say, things you can't show, just because some twat <laughs> might sue, might go. Oh, you can't use my Breville. Whatever. It's true that if you. Um, if there's, we had the characters called Sean Riley, and if there's less than five Sean Rileys in the country, you have to get a written permission from any of them to use your name. Otherwise, they could sue and say, "I've never shot my mum in the head or beaten somebody to death with a cricket bat." But fortunately, all five of them had. <laughs> this is the actual jingle from Uar Dracula. I love the way he shuffles Liz off like that. He can't be bothered. Any man would be glad of a cuddle from Kate Ashfield, but Ed, get off. Do you know what sound effect would have been good on that fruit machine? What's that from Star Wars? Oh yeah, like the the Millennium Falcon or Raiders Lost Ark. Yeah, like the Temple of Doom when the. Let's do another commentary, but only do that noise. Here come now. There were Here come the of, zombies. There are a lot of zombies. <laughs> we had such. It's, we've got to say a massive thank you to everyone that came along and was a zombie. I'd say particularly to the people who were silhouettes because they came on the set thinking, "Hey, I'm going to be a zombie," and they ended up as zombie shadows. Yeah, and they were very good. Bless them. I mean, I'd say ninety point point nine percent of our zombies were lovely, lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> Steve here, who plays John the Landlord. Steve Emerson. Steve Emerson is a a veteran stuntman, a veteran of Superman, Raids the Lost Ark, yeah. Frenzy, he's worked with Hitchcock. He's worked with Hitchcock, all the greats. Spielberg. He was Barry Foster's stunt double in Frenzy, and he was brilliant in this. And we wanted to cast an older actor, stroke stuntman, because we didn't want to have to go to a stunt double on this bit, but... I did I did worry for his health, because this took a long time to do the sequence. Two days. Now, we rehearsed this. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some rehearsal footage from this in in the... Although... I think there's... Can we not show it because of the music? Possibly. Anyway, anyway. There, there's me doing my break dancing. Get the fuses! Uh, this was... This was all... I mean, I, I think the only other song that we considered for this, apart from Don't Stop Me Now, was Rasputin by Boney M, which had a slightly longer intro than Don't Stop Me Now. Yeah. But I, I love this song. It's not an ironic use of Queen at all. I genuinely love this song. There's a great crowd replication shot coming up. Yeah, this is great, the shot. And, Whee! Uh, we and, uh, yeah, it took us a lot. It, it was a very tiring because it was very hot and, uh, and we had what, these little grommets in our ears that were playing the music so we could always be in time with it. It's called earwigs, yeah? So we had earwigs in, so was set up by our fantastic sound department, Simon Hayes, uh, Arthur Turner and uh, young Ben, who... Uh, Clonk. Do you know what? Sometimes people watch this and actually feel sorry for John the Land and, and say that kind of like... Somebody said in a test screening that they said, I love the way that the filmmakers made it ambiguous as whether he was a zombie or not. Really? <laughs> as if we were beating up an old man. Are oh, this, kidding, this was, um, we actually asked somebody if it was possible, Naira, the producer's dad, is a brain surgeon, and we asked him what part of the head could sustain a dart blow and still survive, and if you put it in the side of the skull, you could, you know, survive kind of relatively intact. Although it goes in quite deep. Steve actually did that stunt with the jukebox, which was a one-take wonder. Um, do you remember we did a uh, we did a, a salute to Ben and uh, to it was to Arthur and, and Simon when they went off to work on Layer Cake. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leaving us with uh, Ben Greaves. Sorry, Ben. I just I had metal block then. Um, digital now this, blood. No. Now I drop that real dart. dart. I'm given the real dart there and I hold you go. it up. That's the magic of the movie. And here's the tooling up scene. Now, now, there I am. Everyone, when I walked onto set, oh, Rambo. I wasn't supposed to be Rambo. It was supposed to be Deer Hunter. Or Tackleberry from Police Academy. F off. <laughs> um, the line about the air rifle in the sister's leg was because when I was making films when I was a kid, we had an air rifle on a western that I made when I was 16. And my brother 
put tissue paper into the air rifle and shot me in the leg. He actually came into my bedroom and said, Edgar, can I shoot you in the leg? I was going, no, fuck off. And he's going, no, no, I just want to see what it does. I just want to see what it does. Oh, fuck off. And he shot me in the leg and I had a very localised bruise. It's an amazing story. It's an amazing story. That's why people listen to I once things. chased. I once chased my friend's brother Jeff over a field with a gun once and shot him. He's buried in a shallow grave in Painswick. Um, <laughs> no, it was an air rifle. Then he put up his T-shirts. Anyway, it was a, you know. I like the music in this bit. Dan did a great job. Hello. Penelope covering up her bite with the tissues. She's fading fast. I couldn't get any of the bullets from that gun when we first did that. Really? Yeah. That was always the idea with this film, actually, with the gun, was that we wanted to do a film where the heroes are very ill-equipped and, you know, haven't really used guns before. Because one of the one of the ideas with the was that you know we watched lots of John Woo films, we played lots of first-person shoot-'em-up games, but if somebody gave me a rifle, I wouldn't know what to do with it. No, I wouldn't even know how to take the safety off. Kate now supporting a cut face. All this stuff had to be. Constantly monitored by wardrobe and makeup. Jane Walker and Annie Hardinge had nightmares uh, with continuity, having to. That's a fake arm there with a hole in it. Um, having to keep, particularly my shirt, which the blood pattern. I know. Blood, and, and I ended up just having one shirt that was held together by Febreze. <laughs> this was. Um, Here come the, the zombies. Here come the zombies. Click, click. Nice noise that. Nice no. contra zoom as well. Cock it. That was uh, Ed. His, his saying with Cockett obviously reminded. That's Sarah there. Sarah Mooney, I think. And that's... Uh, Lawrence. Here comes Lawrence and Tim chipping, who... Uh, uh, Sarah gets shot in the shoulder. There's... We wanted to do, like, lots of... Um... That's Lawrence. We wanted to do as much practical effects as possible on this. But we did end up doing some digital things as well. And, in fact, this last bit, this headshot coming up, is fantastic because... It's real. No, well, half of it's real and half of it's digital. But Wait, the, don't you remember the, when we did it? David Dunlap said it was the best headshot he'd seen since uh, Stacks. But what makes it even better Goodfellas. is the front bit is digital. Oh, okay. okay David Diane, Which Double Negative did. So it was a perfect marriage. Double Negative are amazing. Practical they, and they, digital they, effects. Their, their effects are so good, but they're also very subtle, and it's like things that you wouldn't necessarily. Well, that was kind of inspired the assume. idea of doing those things. I was always very anti-digital effects until my brother pointed out that a lot of the effects in Battle Royale were done digitally and I yeah. thought, oh. I've got an anti-digital effect. <laughs> and an uncle. Forget it. Look at the blood on the curtain. This bit with Dylan here where he eventually gets the rifle, we always kind of saw Dylan as, as the kind of like Dustin Hoffman's character in Straw, Straw Dogs. Dogs yeah. The idea of a pacifist being kind of like pushed to violence. And so this is the bit where he kind of... He, He's got a gun in his arms and we can see the change. Now, this is when it all goes a bit dark because, uh, obviously, Barbara is on her last legs and... Uh... It's one of those things that we wrote in the script and when we wrote... The, the day that we wrote, you, that we decided that Sean's mum was going to die... You decided. I decided. You were, you were, you were quite appalled when I suggested Edgar's, it. We were in Edgar's lounge watching the film and Edgar said, let's kill the mum. I was like, what? You can't do that! You kind of reacted as if I suggested that we kill your mum. Well, you did earlier. I did earlier. You wanted but, to assassinate my mum. It was one of those things where you write it as kind of like a, a slightly kind of like a wicked kind of like sort of flippant twist, but then when you actually come to shoot it and you have a top class actress like Penelope Orton, it becomes a lot more we all, darker than It you. was actually really difficult. We all of us had a bit of a... A dark day a doing dark day bit. doing that. I remember going and sitting outside and into the studio one and just fucking crying my eyes out. Well, it's one of those and weird things. Well. That this, this scene kind of like came at like sort of three quarters of the way through the shoot when everybody was exhausted. And as such, kind of like, it, everybody's like genuinely like emotional on the brink of tears, you know. That's one of my favourite jokes in the film is when he says, what is that? I always used to nearly laugh, even though we were in the middle of doing a real emotional scene. <laughs> when he went, what does that mean? Which is obviously a callback to the first scene. Look, Lizzie, she's going to change. This was, doing things like this was kind of really tough because you've got to shoot like six angles and everybody's got to be at fever pitch, you know. I think but some people have, have, have see this as being, I think, slightly darker than it is. I think it's still quite light-hearted in some respects because of the ridiculousness of the standoff. But uh... Well, in a way, the, uh, the idea with this bit is that kind of like, is that they're still wrapped up in their own little problems. Well, that's the whole... I mean, that, the film is in many ways about that, isn't it? It's about the way that your life doesn't change despite what changes around you, you know? Stop looking at your mobile phone and texting. I'm text my girlfriend. What are you doing? Do we doing a commentary? Tell her you're busy. All right, Jesus Christ. As I said, I, I, part of me wishes... You love men. Part of me wishes that um, 
Oh, I'd done a couple more close-ups of zombies hammering down doors. That was in this... There was a lot... It's a very tough scene to Pickle. shoot, this whole kind of, like, a Winchester scene, and... Uh, that's pickle as it goes back a long way, doesn't it? Because that's what your mum used to call you when she, when she was a teacher. And she, we still, used it in, she still calls me it. We used it in space, didn't we? use it in this. It's so unoriginal. Yeah! I like this Charlton Heston gag. Dylan's great in this. It does... Uh, it does... Uh, it does amp up quite considerably. Well, I think sort of, like, people kind of, like... Uh, Get Nick there, fucking hell! <laughs> Whoa, this is my favourite bit. I I get really involved in the film. When the, I forget I'm even in it. This bit when Penelope stands up behind us, I just think it's a lovely shot. And I Penelope know. makes such a great zombie. She's a particularly haunted zombie. It's kind of got that. We wanted to have that feeling where, similar to the bit in Dawn of the Dead when Roger comes back from the dead, where like because you've come to know a character, you don't really want to see them change when no. they come back as something sort of like unsightly there's something sort of like very about it being Penelope as well you just don't want to see Penelope dead no well, <laughs> why would you but there I she think she is. does this great it was, it was genuinely unsettling doing this and we did it right at the end of the day as well I remember it was the, literally the last shot and the last it was the last day we had Penelope and we did it in the last 15 minutes of the day so it was very we wanted to get this idea as well that, and it's a kind of it's slightly against zombie law in a way but that Penelope almost recognises Sean and no, doesn't want to doesn't want to go for him and then when David speaks sorry, that's when she finally changes properly <laughs> ah, bang <laughs> oh CG head bang that wasn't Penelope falling over that was a stunt woman it was, it was another combination of uh... pulled the rug from under her legs to make her go backwards really quickly now this is this is the thing is it's sort of like it's, it this is a this is a tough scene because I always thought Dylan's line here I always thought was very funny him being so tactless but it never gets a laugh because people are too distraught by Wilson getting it people clapped in America when I punched him didn't they yeah when we did the first screening over there and that's when David actually does try to shoot Sean which is uh... I know one of my friends said what what did Dylan D didn't didn't really do anything that bad. He did, you to know, sort of being like, torn limb from but limb. But I said I did point out that he tries to kill Sean. He does try and try murder him. I like this little speech here. I like the fact that you can see the sign. Would patrons please leave, be orderly and quietly leaving the premises? Which of course Dylan fails to do miserably. I love the fact as well that, that Diane gets grows a pair suddenly. Does this amazing speech, takes control of the situation, and then as soon as David goes out, she runs out after him. This was um, it was funny with this bit with the kind of we we didn't really know what how it was gonna um, with the kind of the the effects on this next bit. Basically, you we did a rehearsal, but once it's all kind of set up, the actors have as little idea of what's going to come out of Dylan's guts as we did. So it was quite a spectacular first take. D uh, Katie and uh, Kate and um, and Lucy's reactions are completely real. You can see here Jeff, our stunt coordinator, is in there, and also Paul Putner. Who, uh, Paul Putner, who played a taxi driver, you shall see in the in deleted, deleted scenes. scenes. Yeah, Paul is was destined to be a zombie. He's a zombie fan and a zombie aficionado. Look at him there, angry. Oh, he goes in straight now, to the neck. There we go. And gut balls. Look at that. It's great. They're really going for oh, it. Oh, grim. Now that we actually, they're actually chewing at his arm joints, which is why everything comes off. I've got that head in my study at home now, in a in a bucket of popcorn with some, with some dollars sticking out of his gob. Clonk! It's, uh, I like that. That was Julianne, wasn't it? Who, uh, yeah. Lucy hit. And Joel there at the front. We this music here, I'm really sort of pleased with that Dan did. It's kind of very there. Suspiria, kind of like... Um, oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Style music. This this scene was event originally a lot longer in the script. Well, in the first draft, this was what the scene was, and then it kept getting bigger and bigger, and and it was basically we... we it was very ambitious doing this stuff, and we kind of ran out of time and had to cut a load of stuff. But in a way... We had lots of those going off, didn't we? Yeah, there was more stuff with flaming cocktails. But in a way, I quite like the fact that when the zombies finally get, get in, it's kind of game over. But this was kind of sort of like, this was tough to film. My back Pete. was so bruised after that. <laughs> this is Pete's Fuck noise. a doodle do. Pete's noise there is fantastic. Now, Phyllis, when she was... Phyllis, who bites <laughs> down on, on the Nick's neck. I think got blood all in her eye and really didn't know what had hit her, literally. It looked like a vampire bukkake movie. <laughs> a zombie bukkake movie. <laughs> it was very grim. Look That's at, great. He's got a gut saying out of his gob. this, you'll see, could boom. That was done afterwards. You'll see that on the, on the special effects comparison, but that was a really good job there. 
Um, there was another thing when we saw it in the States was when it, when Ed got bitten, the whole crowd went, No! No! Because <laughs> they love Ed. And that was done, even though it's a, seem, a seemingly simple stunt, that was done by you and Kate. Yeah. Jumping over. We both did that, jumping on a little springboard and over the bar. I love that bit, that bit of music, that little breakdown in the music's quite day of the dead, I like that. And here comes Ed. And Nick must have been soaked in about 80 gallons of blood. I oh, know, he, he was very, very sticky. He loved it. This was all done on the last day of the set. Crap. This whole fire thing was done in one day, which was very sort of ambitious. This is him. when it, we were actually able to literally demolish the set. I know. And then, oh... Uh, I thought you, you were actually on fire yeah, at one point. Yeah, you didn't call cut. That's the funny thing. I thought thing. Simon caught on fire, but I, I was so horrified I failed to call cut. I was that concerned for his safety. <laughs> He um, just liked the shot. It did look good. It, it did look good. amazing. I did. Is she Here's Patricia. Here's Patricia. The Irish spinster from earlier coming back. The porn actress. To get her kind of revenge. Not really. You see little headshots there. Bang! I love that was done in one take. That was very nicely done. I remember it said in the script that, that, she was actually, that she was actually excited to be behind the bar, and when she got shot, she looked a bit disappointed. And... <laughs> The, um, the set, the cellar set. This was the very. This is. The, well, is it, no, it wasn't the last thing we did because we did the the Sean's flat. Oh after yeah, of course, yeah, because um, Kate left and then it was just me and Nick. Wasn't it? This was it, this was one of the first things that we had the idea for of like the kind of a kind of quite a bleak kind of. We wanted it to feel like that this was going to be the end scene, and obviously it was kind of trying to lead up to the idea that they were going to commit suicide. Man, this up. I just like the idea of the two, you know, the lovers coming back together over, like, oh, you know. I, just, I couldn't save us, you know, I couldn't save Di or David, I couldn't even save my mum. Oh, stop whining. I'm just, I'm used you're to very good at crying. I must say, you're, a, you, you, you're very kind of like, you're very em emotional actor. Well, uh, when I watched the <laughs> back, I thought, God, I, I think I, 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 I cries a lot, but then... He loses his stepdad, and each time you do these scenes individually, you, you try and match what you'd feel. It ends up Sean's just a complete crybaby. I know, it's a weird thing, because, like, sort of, you know... It... His mom, his stepdad, his best friend, you know, it's all, like... It's actually... It's, uh, I remember I wanted to write a scene at the end of the film when Sean's, like, with some mention of Sean being in therapy. Yeah. <laughs> After, kind of, like, having to kill his, kind of, like, mum. An Oedipus complex. Well, yeah, a very literal, sort of... I mean, the fact that he has to kill his... Oh, no, it's his dad, Oedipus. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember university. I was drunk. I don't mind being eaten. Um, I don't know. We always thought that Kate sounds like Barbara Windsor in this bit. I like it when she says, I'll only muck it up if I'm no, doing it myself. Look at the state of my shirt. That <laughs> thing stunk. I remember Annie had was constantly having kittens about the kind of, like, she, she literally did have kittens. She did have kittens. She had Ronaldo's kittens. Yeah. <laughs> um, bit of gossip. No, but ba they were very worried about the shirt continuity. We should point out, bless him. just briefly, that Ronaldo gave Annie some kittens. Uh, Ronaldo and Annie aren't having an affair. Uh, <laughs> because you made it sound like they were. I like this scene. This is, you know... Um, I would like to be shot. It's funny, that either gets a big laugh or doesn't get a laugh at all. I'm so sure sometimes people miss that. Nick's little interjections. I remember this. I did this in the morning. I was knackered. You can hear the zombies creaking and hey, the fags that were thrown in the bin earlier. She, everything in the film. There's a lot of red and white in the film. Like you notice, yeah, there's yeah. Sean's uh, obviously Sean's outfit and Ed's trainers, the cigarettes, the the beer cloth. We that Ed to... maps, mops himself with. Yeah, because of the thing with the costume of having muted colours for everything else. Ah. Every, everything that's significant in the film, like Pete's car, the headband, the you know the tie, rather, you know, it's all red. So everything that's kind of like significant is the red. The football that the. Oh, do you remember there was a scene... kind of like a don't look now motif. The uh, ish. initially there was a. They found the trapdoor because the football came through the window. It was oh, like yeah. everybody converged on the pub, even the kid. Yeah, we had the idea that the kid came into it as well at the end in the Winchester. Um, I like this. This 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 reminds me. It just kind of reminds me of the Terminator for some reason. Just the music, the dance score at this point kind of sounds very much like the Terminator, and just this kind of like nice kind of like. I think it's because the fate, male bonding. Yeah. Testosterone in the air. Fate thick has in been the air. Sealed. With, if only Nick had gone into a lava pit and put the thumbs up. I know. <laughs> I need a vacation. Oh, the worst line in Terminator 2. Ever. 
of worst line of otherwise, film history. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. <laughs> Terrible line. Otherwise, a great film, but that bit and the thumbs up can fuck off. Hey! <laughs> Yeah, I love the music in this bit. Oh, heads together. See, there's us having a go for, at Terminator 2 for being soppy, and yet this is somehow the soppiest bit. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> I know. Where the hell do we get off? I love these shots of the... Um, Jesus. These are very kind of folk-style kind of like sort of shots of hands and things. I really like all this stuff. I love... I love Nick saying cheers here. Cheers. This, cheers. Love you. I love the fact that Kate's got a chain cheers. and I've got an axe. It's I know like a whole new a whole new generation of weapons. When the action figures come out, the last generation will have Just Sean with axe and Liz with chain. <laughs> It'd be like the Return of the Jedi sort of Star Wars figures that nobody bought. They came in yeah. the, out in nineteen eighty seven. But then become the most valuable. Exactly. Mm. This here was there. this was basically this was shot some of this was shot six months apart. We went basically the, when we shot this scene, it was the shortest night of the year and we ran out of time and we had to come back and shoot some more footage. I love that crane now, this shot, is, by the way. Which was cut in half, actually. I know, because... Wait, this was shot... That, a lot of this stuff that. was shot on a stage in Shepparton six months after the fact. You, if you watch on uh, on the, the extras Joe Cornish's DVD uh, video diary, yeah. you'll see... I love this bit. Ching, 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 ching. We always wanted to get this, but we couldn't get it on the day. There and so, is... Joe Cornish is there on the left. Uh, and Lucy Atkins, Atkins. Atkins. who played uh, Sophie in space. Yeah. And, this uh, music is wicked as well. It's weird. It's kind of like Doctor Who music. Well, this is like it's like kind of unit coming into it from a John Pertwee episode. Yeah. <laughs> and we reshot this. This was reshot as well. Hitting. To now, what were the twins' names? It was Nick and Kevin and Nick. Kevin and Nick. And uh, I'm not they, sure which is which. <laughs> they were brilliant, weren't they? They were really good. They were and well they, up for it. And they again, Kevin and Nick are not stuntmen, and they did that fall about eight times. Bless I know, them. And but with I relish. Think, I think they were they were suffering by the end of it. But they didn't complain once, did they? They were suffering in stereo. Stereo suffering. Um, the There's, music in uh, the, I like the, uh, Captain Janeway, come to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music in this bit. I like. I, I was great having Jess. Um, I think. I think because Jess was doing other things and stuff, she might have probably made a larger contribution if she hadn't been. But I think the uh, the fact that she's just this kind of significant cameo, I think, really works well. This is the voice of Rob Brydon. My brother did these graphics. This is all cool. stuff. There's uh, me in the background. That's when the, the, the very first makeup day. Me building up my part. You did big up your part, but you like that, don't you? Ronaldo. There's Ronaldo, the line producer. There's um, there's JT. JT again. Justin Timberlake. Rock your butt. And uh, <laughs> now this you can see the whole of on uh, the DVD, the unexpurgated version of. Coldplay and Vernon Kay on T4 improvising like crazy. Johnny and Chris and Guy who didn't turn up because he lost his phone and couldn't find where Channel 4 was and Will was in New Zealand. But thank you guys for that. Wasn't the whole story in it that like, Will had been eaten by zombies? <laughs> yeah, we had a whole story. Well, that was Garth Jennings and uh, Nick, Nick Goldsmith. Goldsmith there, who are the producer and director of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Soon to be seen, starring Martin Freeman and Sam Rockwell. Uh, Trisha Goddard, God bless you for being such a great sport and uh, doing a really convincing mini show on zombies, which really works well, I think. I know, that was done during the recording breaks on the actual Trisha show. Uh, First Samantha, thing we shot, actually. Yeah, Samantha and Alex were the sort of the people on that improvising. Brilliant. Samantha actually nearly started crying at one point because the crowd laughed and she didn't realise that she was supposed to be being funny. <laughs> it was but I'm not sure the Trisha crowd knew that it wasn't real. <laughs> Uh, this speech here, this speech here is like mirrors Ed's speech, the kind of Ed's uh, speech in the Winchester about kind of the plan and uh, the phoenix mentioned here is... The Winchester, reborn from the ashes. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's kind of like, like Liz becoming like an Ed. But hang on a minute, maybe she doesn't need to be, if you know what I mean. Also, you have two sugars in there where oh, you yeah. don't before. That's supposed to be Sean being adventurous. This ending was we was written before the beginning. We always wanted to make a happy ending of sorts to the film. And I think I'm a big fan of zombie films, but I think Nick is possibly one of my favourite ever zombies. He's just like a drunk monkey. <laughs> Look at him. And he's drunk at the end. Oh, yeah, uh, we seeing did. Rafe as the zombie. Nick uh, Angel there, our, our music supervisor. Gina J, wonderful casting director, who got us our wonderful cast. Inside track, he's a lovely guy, weird name. Film 4, lovely bloke. Ronnie 4. 
I'm <laughs> Ronnie Four. And here they come. Peg, Ashfield, Frost and Davis. The um Morin. This is Ash and Chris Martin covering the Buzzcocks, which was a very nice thing that they did essentially for, for nothing. Because they're good fellas. They're good fellas. And don't get annoyed when they're not in the film very often. Oh. I like having lots of himself in the end credits. My favourite thing here, Chris Martin and Keith Chegwin, right at the end of the credits. <laughs> what more could you ask for? There's Keith Karen. Chegwin is himself. Richard what? Hewitt, let's mention our fantastic I first know. AD, who was the wrangler of the Zombage and uh, is a superb person. Um, don't know who these people are. Kenny MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny MacDonald worked on it. Kenny MacDonald. I know. Bless lots him. of great people. Everybody works so hard on this film, and like we, you know, it's my brother. One Ro of his two credits. Rosie Thomas. Redoing all my storyboards. Stuart, there we go, our special effects boys. Stuart actually worked on Brain Dead. Peter Jackson saying recommended to me by Chris Cunningham, but basically he now, worked on Brain Dead, and uh, that should say it all. Top of hair and makeup there is Candy Spanks, who, if you say her name really quickly, is Candy Spanks, which sounds like a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I used to call it Spanky. Anthea Turner? What? Oh, Arthur Turner. Arthur, Arthur Turner. is probably the best boom swinger in the business. He's a geezer and has, does some incredible things with a pole. Tina Richardson. Oh, oh Tina. I bumped into Tina in old Compton Lovely Street. Tina. The bluest of eyes. Litzer Bixler, who was our choreographer and some uh, hero of the piece in terms of movement. A lot of stunt performers. Stace. Now, I didn't know that Eddie Murphy was our construction supervisor. I didn't. <laughs> I think he. I think he did. I think he did that between Mighty for Professor Two, The Clumps, and The Haunted Mansion. Yeah, and but we had to Kevin to stop making him stop laughing during takes because it would put people off. <laughs> uh, who else have we got here? This is all the reshoot people. It's quite a long list for the edition of photography. Mark Moriarty, who was our B camera guy, who also did the reshoots, who's a very was, nice guy. Oh, Mark, yeah. Lucy Kane, who came in to do makeup during the reshoots. My when mate Ollie. Jane was off doing something huge, wasn't she? Ollie Van der Viver, who's my mate from school, we used to live around the corner from me, still work together. Oscar Wright again, there what's he trying Oscar to do? Wright. Building up his part. Double negative, big up the boys that DN and girls. I know, Double Negative did a great job. Everybody did a great I, job. It amazes me God's sake. to think that our little film was big put onions, together by NPC. such a massive amount of people. All these people came together to, to, to make it, and it's, it, I'm sounding a bit soppy, but what the hell, I love man. Walkie Talkie's there. Lovely guy. Yep. Um, Delane Lee. What on, else can we say? Old, on Dean Street there. Uh, now, Dan Manford and Pete Woodhead are ex of the Sons of Silence, who did a lot of stuff in Space. So it was very nice to kind of keep them on board. If you like the music in the film, the soundtrack's available from all good record shops. Mostly. Island Records. On Island Records. Here's all the songs you can see now. Uh, most of which I'm, are on the soundtrack. I'm very pleased to have like a, a Queen and Goblin and Kid Koala all there on the same thing. But like, you love Goblin Queen, right? I do. Derek Jarman. That Smith clip was directed ah, by Derek yeah, Jarman. We had to go to the Derek Jarman estate. Now, who's here? My mum and dad. My mum and sister. My girlfriend. My lady. Uh, your lady. Naira's boyfriend. Man Robert Popper of Look Around You Fame. David Wallian, Walliams. who did a, uh, a vocal cameo. And here's the gonk. Here's the gonk from the original Dawn of the Dead. Remixed by Kid Koala. What better way to end the film than with the mall music from <laughs> Monroeville Mall? <laughs> Just an island singing. Stop! <laughs> 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 <laughs>